Isaiah 28, continuing now to verse 7. These two have indulged in wine and are giddy with strong drink. Priests and prophets have gone astray through liquor. They're intoxicated with wine and stagger because of strong drink. They err as seers. They blunder in their decisions. Notice that in this one little verse, we have the terms priests, prophets, seers. In Isaiah 24, it says, in verse 5, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they've transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. All right. The reason why I pulled up that scripture is because over here it says these two have indulged in wine, are giddy with strong drink, they're astray through liquor, intoxicated with wine. Okay. And so just to get an idea of how the scriptures are using this term wine, because this is not physical wine. This is wine, which I think from the readings I've done represents um, doctrine, teachings, philosophies. The new wine mourneth. This is really interesting. So the new wine I'm thinking here is referring back to um, the, the fullness of the gospel that was given at the time of Joseph Smith. But notice that this wine is mourning because it says back here in verse 5 that they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So they've gone away from the original wine that they received, the original teachings, and they've changed them um, into something else. Let's go to Doctrine and Covenant section 1 where it talks a little bit about that too. We know this is in the last days because it says, and the arm of the Lord shall be revealed. The arm of the Lord, um, this is being revealed. This is a direct quote from the book of Isaiah. This is the end time servant, which has not yet been revealed. So um, this is at the very end that it's talking about. And the day cometh that they who will not hear the voice of the Lord, neither the voice of his servants. Now this is talking about his end time servant and those that are working with him. Neither give heed to the words of the prophets and apostles. The prophets and apostles are the scriptures that we have. Shall be cut off from among the people. For they have strayed from mine ordinances and have broken mine everlasting covenant. Now, it's interesting that it says shall be cut off from among the people because if you go to Doctrine and Covenant section 86, I believe is the one that talks about um, the um, parable of the wheat and the tares. Um, I think it uses that exact term. I guess we could just go there. We'll see really quickly. I should just go there. Doctrine and Covenants 86. Um, meaning of the parable of the wheat and the tares. Um, so, no, it doesn't use cut off. It says, therefore, let the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest is fully ripe. Then you shall gather out the wheat from among the tares. And after the gathering of the wheat, behold, and lo, the tares are bound in bundles and the fill remaineth to be burned. No, it's in another place where it talks about cutting off. Hang on and I'll find it real quick. Okay, so this is actually Jesus Christ himself in 3 Nephi chapter 21. It's really interesting because this is the end time work that he's talking about. Starting in verse 9, for in that day for my sake shall the Father, the Father, notice this is the work of the Father, um, the Father work of work which shall be a great and a marvelous work among them. And there shall be among them those who will not believe it, 
although a man shall declare it unto them. What man? His servant. This is the end time servant. But behold, the life of my servant shall be in my hand. Therefore they shall not hurt him, although he shall be marred because of them. Yet I will heal, heal him, for I will show unto them that my wisdom is greater than the cunning of the devil. Therefore it shall come to pass that whosoever will not believe in my words, who am Jesus Christ, which the Father shall cause him to bring forth unto the Gentiles, and shall give unto him power, that he shall bring them forth unto the Gentiles. It shall be done even as Moses said. They shall be cut off from among my people who are of the covenant. Their hand, in verse 13, shall be lifted up upon their adversaries, and all their enemies shall be cut off. Yea, woe unto the Gentiles, except they repent. And who are the Gentiles? We are the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds. And I will cut off, here's all, cut off over and over again, witchcrafts out of thy land, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images I will cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands. For they have strayed from mine ordinances, broken mine everlasting covenant. They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness. I'm back in Doctrine and Covenant section 1. But every man walketh in his own way, and after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world, and whose substance is that of an idol, which waxeth old, and shall perish in Babylon, even Babylon the great, which shall fall. Okay. Let's go back and re-anchor ourselves in what we're looking at. Whoops, I don't know how that just happened. Go back. Ah, oh, I meant to click there. These two have indulged in wine and are giddy with strong drink. Priests and prophets have gone astray through liquor. They're intoxicated with wine and stagger because of strong drink. They err as seers, they blunder in their decisions. There were a couple more verses I was going to read to you about the prophets okay um i'm now in isaiah chapter 56 because great are the words of isaiah come all you beasts of the field eat greedily all you beasts of the forest israel's watchmen are blind they are all oblivious they are all mute dogs they cannot bark they are dreamers lying around loving to slumber like ravenous dogs they are never satisfied they are shepherds with no discernment. They all turn to their own way, each one seeking his own gain. Come, let me get the wine. Let us imbibe the strong drink, and tomorrow will be like today, only far better. So they are drinking in um, the wisdom of men. They, they, they have um, philosophies that they're taking in. Um, and they're becoming more and more drunk by it. So they cannot warn. They become like it says, um, mute dogs that cannot bark. Going to Jeremiah now. <clears throat> Flee from Babylon, escape with your lives. Do not be destroyed in her punishment. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will pay her what she deserves. Babylon was a gold cup in the hand of the Lord, making the whole earth drunk. Okay, so this is where this wine is coming from that the prophets and the priests and the seers are drinking. It says they're giddy with strong drink. They've indulged in wine. These are things that they've chosen to indulge in. Okay, um, they're, they're intoxicated with wine and stagger because of strong drink. So now in Jeremiah, we're learning where this wine or drink is coming from okay it says babylon has a gold cup in the hand of the lord making the whole earth drunk the nations drink her wine therefore the nations have gone mad suddenly babylon has fallen and been shattered well for her get her balm for her pain perhaps she can be healed 
anyway, and it goes on. I'm, I'm not going to read the rest of that. This was the part that I really wanted to come home on. So where is this wine coming from? It's coming from Babylon. They're drinking the wine of Babylon. They're drinking in um, the teachings of the world. Okay. They are listening to the wise men, the sages, um, the prof, the, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? I can't think of what it is. But anyway, you understand. They're, they're drunk with the wine of Babylon. Let's go to Isaiah. Come all, we're now in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you, without money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on that which is not bread, and your labor on that which does not satisfy Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest of foods. So where are we supposed to get our wine and milk and food from? We're supposed to get it from God. Incline your ear and come to me, says the Redeemer. Okay, and those are my words. Incline your ear and come to me. That's Isaiah. But I'm adding in, says the Redeemer, listen, so that your soul may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My loving devotion promised to David. Behold, I have made him a witness to the nations, a leader and a commander of the people. The leader, this, this David that it's talking about is also called the Davidic servant. This is that end time servant that I keep making reference to that we just read in third Nephi that Jesus himself made reference to. So let's come back over here to Isaiah and make some progress. Okay. These two have indulged in wine and are giddy with strong drink. Priests and prophets have gone astray through liquor. They are intoxicated with wine and stagger because of strong drink. They err as seers. They blunder in their decisions for all tables are filled with vomit. No spot is without excrement. Now, according to Avraham Gileadi, um, this, um, vomit is, um, the taking in of the word of God and then mixing it with the philosophies of men and then regurgitating it. Whom shall he give instruction? Who is the Lord going to give instruction to? Because remember the prophets, priests, and seers are drunk. Are they drunk with the wine of Babylon? So whom shall he give instruction? Who shall he enlighten with revelation? Weanlings weaned from milk, those just taken from the breast. Okay, for it is but line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, a trifle here, a trifle there. <clears throat> They're still babes. They are not ready to receive revelation. They are still going through um in baby steps. Therefore, by incomprehensible speech and a strange tongue, must he speak to these people. This is talking about the Assyrian. That is the code name that um, Isaiah gives this end time destroyer that's going to come and do great destruction. To whom he said, this is rest, let the weary rest. This is respite, but they would not listen. Okay, now this actually takes us straight back to Doctrine and Covenants 84 um, because we did exactly what Moses, um, <clears throat> Moses' people did. Let's go ahead and pull that up. This is a really key scripture to understand because we did exactly the same thing. We were given the fullness. We were... Um, asked to come under the everlasting covenant um, to be a Zion people where we have everything in common, the law of consecration, and we refused it. So we could not enter into the rest of the Lord. Let's go ahead and read here. It's just the exact same thing. So I'm in Doctrine and Covenant section 84, verse 23. Now this Moses plainly taught to the children of Israel in the wilderness and sought diligently to sanctify his people that they might behold the face of God. 
but they hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore, the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they should not, what? Enter into his rest. Because, just like it said, they could not endure his presence. Being in the presence of God is being in his rest. Okay? So we'll read that verse again. But they hardened their hearts and could not endure his presence. Therefore the Lord in his wrath, for his anger was kindled against them, swore that they should not enter into his rest while in the wilderness, which rest is the fullness of his glory. Okay? So they couldn't enter into the order of Melchizedek. Okay? Um, and actually, we'll read that in the very next verse, 25. Therefore, he took Moses out of their midst and the holy priesthood also. And the lesser priesthood continued, which priesthood holdeth the keys of the ministering of angels in the preparatory gospel. That's exactly what happened to us um, at the beginning when Joseph Smith restored the fullness, laid the foundation, of course, through the direction of Jesus Christ. Um, and we rejected it. And so now we've been reduced to the preparatory gospel. I know those are hard words to take in. Okay. Let's go um, back to Isaiah chapter 28. So therefore by incomprehensible speech and a strange tongue must he speak to these people. So now we know who these people are, the ones that were offered to come into his rest. To whom he said, this is rest, let the weary rest, this is respite. But they would not listen. So to them, the word of Jehovah remained, right? Because they couldn't have, they couldn't enter into the presence of the Lord and receive direct revelation. Okay. So to them it remained his word, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, a trifle here, a trifle there. That persisting, they might lapse into stumbling and break themselves, become ensnared and be taken captive. And that is our current state. It tells us that in the book of Isaiah, and actually the Doctrine and Covenants quotes the books, book of Isaiah and explains that. Hang on, we'll I'll read it in the Doctrine and Covenants. Okay, so here it is in Isaiah chapter 52, starting in verse 1, actually. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. All right, so um, the daughter of Zion, which are the remnants of um, the restored church of Jesus Christ, um, including the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the, the daughter of Zion is um, needs to lose herself. And we'll see an explanation of this in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 113. This was in 1838 that this was given. Elias Higby had questions about the 52nd, 52nd chapter um, of Isaiah. Um, specifically, he wanted to know, what is put on thy strength, O Zion, um, mean? And who was he referring to? So the answer was, he had reference to those whom God should call in the last days, who should hold the power of priesthood. Now, this is 1838, and Joseph Smith is explaining this as if it were a future event. This is something that we really need to get rid of our cognitive dissonance and understand um, that we had already been rebuked of God at this point, and we had lost the fullness. Okay. Verse eight, he had reference to those whom God should call in the last days, who should hold the power of priesthood to bring again Zion and the redemption of Israel. And to put on her strength is to put on the authority of the priesthood, which she Zion has a right to by lineage. Also look at this to return to that power, which she had lost, right? Because we had lost the power. 
at that point. So then verse nine, what are we to understand by Zion loosing, loosing herself from the bounds of her neck? Second verse, we are to understand that the scattered remnants are exhorted to return to the Lord from whence they have fallen. Okay, remember it's only gonna be a remnant. Okay, the wheat is gonna be gathered out and then behold the, the, the tares are will be gathered in bundles and burned. So this is a remnant exhorted to what? Return to the Lord from whence they have fallen. Oikes, that just breaks my heart because I didn't understand that we had fallen and that we had to return to the Lord, which if they do, the promise of the Lord is that he will speak to them or give them revelation. So it'll no longer be line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, a little here, a little there. No, it will be the new covenant that was promised that Jeremiah so beautifully speaks of in Jeremiah chapter 31. I believe it's verse 31 um, where he says um, that no one will say anymore, know the Lord because they shall all know the Lord and that he shall write his laws on our hearts because we now have a personal relationship with Christ. Okay, and then it goes on. The bands of her neck are the curses of God upon her. Okay, and what did we read at the very beginning? What did we read? The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. Okay, going down to verse five. I'm in Isaiah 24. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they've transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Verse six, therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. Doctrine and covenants. One, does that talk about the curse? Um, let's see. No, that one doesn't talk about the curse. Okay. But Isaiah does. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. Okay, back to um, where we were. Okay. We are to understand that the scattered remnants are exhorted to return to the Lord from whence they have fallen, which if they do, the promise of the Lord is that he will speak to them or give them revelation. The bounds of her neck are the curses of God upon her or the remnants of Israel in their scattered condition where among the Gentiles. We are one of the Gentile churches. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is one of the Gentile churches. We are numbered among the Gentiles. The scriptures are very clear about that. Let us continue. Um, uh, verse 13, Isaiah 28. So to them, the word of the Lord remained line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, a trifle here, a trifle there, that persisting they might lapse into stumbling and break themselves, become ensnared and be taken captive. So that's our current state. Therefore, hear the word of Jehovah, you scoffers, who preside over these people in Jerusalem. So these are the people who are presiding over the people of God. Okay. He's calling them scoffers. You have supposed by taking refuge in deception and hiding behind falsehoods to have covenanted with death. Right. So they have... Um, they have drank the wine of Babylon. I think it was right here. Flee from Babylon, escape with your lives. Do not be destroyed in her punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. This is Jeremiah chapter 51. I'm on verse 6. He will pay her what she deserves. Babylon was a gold cup in the hand of the Lord, making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore, the nations have gone mad. All right. So you, ha you have supposed by taking refuge in deception and hiding behind falsehoods, they have drank the wine, the strong drink 
of Babylon. They believe in the things that they're being taught by, by this governing power that is full of falsehoods. And that's what it says. You suppose that by taking refuge in de deception and hiding behind falsehoods to have covenanted with death or reached an understanding with Sheol that should a flooding scourge sweep through the earth, it shall not reach you. Okay, so should some terrible illness or some terrible disease sweep through the earth, it won't reach you because you have entered into a covenant with these falsehoods, this covenant with death. Therefore, thus says my Lord Jehovah, I lay in Zion a stone, a keystone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. They who believe it will not do rashly. Okay, I got to take you to another spot in Isaiah where it talks about, and I've already, you know what, maybe I shouldn't do that because it's just going to take too much time. I did a um, video on the redemption of Zion, which was based around one of the chapters of Isaiah where it talks about um, Eliakim and, um, oh, what's the other guy's name? Eliakim and, oh, the other guy's name won't come to me. Anyway, basically, it's the story of the current leadership, um, those who currently have the keys to the palace. Um, that man, Eliakim, is found wanting, and he's removed. And those who are um, depending on that person, those who are with him, end up being cut off from among the people. And it's those who um, who hear the words and follow the new servant, the one that is clothed in the robes of righteousness, who has um, the key of David, who has the sealing power. Those who follow him are the ones that are saved, okay? Therefore, thus says my Lord Jehovah, I lay in Zion a stone, a keystone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. They who believe it will not do rashly. All right. So if we are founded on truth and righteousness, we'll not act rashly in this time. Verse 17, I will make justice the measure, righteousness the weight. A hail shall sweep away your false refuge. So this false refuge you've come up with is not going to help you. And waters flood the hiding place. Verse 18, your covenant with death shall prove void. Your understanding with Sheol have no effect. When the flooding scourge sweeps, not if, you see, before it said, it said, should a flooding scourge sweep through the earth, it shall not reach you. Okay, that's what they're thinking. Verse 15, now we're on verse 18 and god is saying when the flooding scourge sweeps through you shall be overrun by it so your covenant with death isn't going to help you okay as as often as it sweeps through you shall be seized by it morning after morning it shall sweep through by day and by night it shall seize you it shall cause terror merely to hear the word of it so you're not going to escape as a matter of fact, because you've taken this covenant with death or taken this action, um, you will be destroyed. Verse 20, then shall come to pass the proverb, the couch is too short to stretch out on, the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in. So according to Avraham Gileadi, because I don't understand, I have not seen this anywhere else in scriptures, but According to him, what this means is that you can't ever get comfortable. You have, there's no rest. Remember earlier we were talking about who said this is rest? Um, well, they have provoked the anger of the Lord, and for them there is no rest. The couch is too short to stretch out on, the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in. There's no getting comfortable. There is no rest. Verse 21, for Jehovah will rise up as he did on Mount Perizim and be stirred to anger as in the valley of Gibeon to perform his act, his unwanted act, and do his work, his bizarre work. In the KJV, it's his strange work, right? 
Now, therefore, scoff not, lest your bonds grow severe. Okay? So don't make fun of those who are refusing to enter into this covenant of death. For I have heard utter destruction decreed by my Lord Jehovah of hosts upon the whole earth. Give heed and hear my voice. Be attentive and listen to what I say. Will the plowman be forever plowing to sow seed, disking and harrowing the same ground? When he has smoothed its surface, does he not sprinkle fennel and scatter cumin? Does he not demarcate wheat from barley? and plant buckwheat in its own plot. His God instructs him, directing him in the proper procedure. So in other words, we're not going to go on constantly plowing and planting. There is going to be a harvest. There is going to be a judgment. Okay? And he is going to demarcate or separate wheat from barley and put buckwheat in its own plot. Okay? The wheat are going to be separated from the tares. Fennel is not threshed with a sharp tooth sledge, nor is cartwheel rolled over cumin. Fennel is beaten out with a stick and cumin with a rod. So the judgments will be just. It will be according as we deserve. Verse 28, domestic grain is ground. One does not go on endlessly threshing it. It cannot be ground by driving horse or threshing cart over it. So justice, there will be justice. There will be judgment. These things originate with Jehovah of hosts, whose counsel is wonderful, whose inspiration is surpassing. Okay? So everything is going to be put to right by our God. So it's a tough time that we are going through. It's a time of judgment. But it's also the time in which the true believers of Jesus Christ will be freed. Zechariah talks about this time in Zechariah chapter 8. He says, this is what the Lord of hosts says. Let your hands be strong, you who now hear these words spoken by the prophets, who were present when the foundations were laid to rebuild the temple, the house of the Lord of hosts. So this is a future event. And this is about the establishment of Zion, the new Jerusalem. Verse 10, for before those days, neither man nor beast received wages, nor was there safety from the enemy for anyone who came or went. For I had turned every man against his neighbor. That's the moment in which we're in right now when um, every man is going to be turned against his neighbor. But now I will not treat the remnant. So this is the remnant that's left of this people as I did in the past, declares the Lord of hosts. For the seed will be prosperous. The vine will yield its fruit. The ground will yield its produce and the skies will give their due. To the remnant of this people, I will give all these things as an inheritance so from these things that i've studied my testimony is that we need to put our trust in the lord and only on the lord and rely on him ask him to help us to recognize the servant and accept him when he comes that we can be the wheat that's gathered out and ask him what we can do because it says beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those who publish peace, good tidings. Ask him how we can be those people who are publishing peace. In other words, are teaching the true doctrine of Jesus Christ and are giving people hope because there is a deliverance. There is a remnant that will be called out. And then that remnant of the Gentiles who will be called out and who will be instructed, who will lay the foundation of Zion, to them will come the lost tribes of Israel. And righteousness will sweep through the earth and wickedness will be gone 
and all of our tears will be wiped dry and we will be comforted in Zion. Let our hands not hang down. Let us not be slack. Let us be strong and true to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.